Welcome to the interview room. <clears throat> Grateful that you're here with us. I'm in Anderson, Indiana, hometown of Barry and Suzanne Morphew. I'm actually standing in front of the church they were married in, the Grace Baptist Church. How did a marriage of Barry and Suzanne, and that love story, turn into such a tragedy where Suzanne now has been missing for almost a year? Well, I'm about ready to tell you. Take a seat. I'm Chris McDonough a retired homicide detective. I've interviewed thousands of people, from serial killers to ministers. Welcome to the interview room. So I'm standing here at uh, Barry Morphew's house where he grew up. At this house, as you can see where the trailer is, okay, is the boyhood home of Barry. Next to that, the other White House, that is where Trevor Noel's house was, or Barry's sister. And this is the area that he grew up in. And not far from here is where he went to school. But what's important about this particular area is all of these woods here go back for miles. And this is Barry's hunting ground. This entire area, he knew just unbelievably well. And that helps us understand a little bit about how he thinks. In order to understand the hunter, you have to understand where he hunts. This house is very significant because this house is also where Barry would be under that, all that pressure from his father, where he would be told, get to the ball field, he would walk up this road to school, which is right at the end of the block here. And it was this house where all of that pressure would come. So I want to take you into the early development years of uh, Barry. Behind me is Cunningham Elementary School. This is a school where Barry went from kindergarten to sixth grade. It's closed now, but as you can tell, this area right here was critical to his early developmental phase. He went into professional baseball, at least he tried to get there. He got dropped out of the minors. He just wasn't good enough at that point. But this baseball diamond that you're looking at out here is where those first years started. Barry would come day after day being told by his dad, practice, 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 who, who, by the way, has been described as being extremely forceful. But Barry could walk on water and his two sisters couldn't. But his dad would make him practice every single day, uh, almost relentlessly. He even built a batting cage in the back of his house in order to understand his intensity you first have to understand this baseball field let's go take a look if you look around you also 
you can tell over here, this is part of the area where he would also hunt as a young boy. I can still sense the children playing here. And I can also sense Barry taking this very walk as a young boy, not knowing that his baseball career potentially would not be his future. This is left field of that now lost dream. The two dugouts, the snack bar. Can't you picture it as a kid? I think we all played on one of these types of fields. But what's interesting is there's a tree almost where the pitcher's mound would have been. So how many times did Barry's father sit on these bleachers and watch his son play baseball? You just wonder. So one of the things I want to point out here is if you take a look up here, up the street, this is the area where Barry grew up. This is his hunting ground. Barry shot a lot of animals in those woods back there growing up as a teenager. Now, it's important to understand the behavioral aspect in order to understand the hunter, you have to recognize where he has hunted. Okay? Well, this is it. He used to shoot raccoons as a kid. He would skin them and then sell them for about $30 a piece. Okay? Um, this is really a fascinating part of Barry's personality and understanding uh, what makes him tick. Take a look. This is his area. And if we come out, if we come out to this road here, you can see the house down there where he surrounded the house, as you saw, with trees. He surrounded that house with trees, kind of a barrier. That, that says a lot. That says a lot about his personality. Just absolutely fascinating.
So I'm standing here where it all happened for Barry at a younger age. 1986, Alexandria Tigers. His father pushed him so hard that this ball field became a place of refuge for Barry. Think about it. This is the dugout, the home dugout, where Barry grew up, his mind, his intensity, his abilities were all honed right here on this ball field. And in fact, it led him to the minor leagues for the Blue Jays. And that must have been an amazing, amazing experience for him. But it all started at that school where we were just at. And then here at this high school, Alexandria High School, the Tigers. It's interesting that tigers and cats seem to be a theme in Barry's thought process. Remember in the behavioral analysis of people, of suspects or subjects, they go back to what they know. Yeah, I find it interesting that he interjects a lion or tiger into the conversation about Suzanne's disappearance. Maybe it's a familiarity that he had. If you take a look at the center field out there, the scoreboard says Tiger Field. Well, that's what he was looking at all the time. You know, it's interesting as I look at this Tiger's ball cap that all the kids would wear. <clears throat> Maybe Barry wore one just like this. But what's interesting is what's engraved on the inside. It says the game. Sometimes behavior becomes a game. Again, is that what we may be seeing here? I'm not sure yet. Let's keep going. So let's take a walk. You'll see the theme here are tigers. Everything's about tigers. What's so significant about this ball field though, this one, this is the one place Barry could not excel. And the reason for that is his father wouldn't let him. And that's the football field. Barry was denied an opportunity to become a star here. But he could become a star in the baseball field. But his father would not let him. He held him back for fear that he would get injured and would interfere with his baseball career. Isn't that fascinating that ultimately though, Barry gets injured and it ruins his professional uh, opportunities. I think it's fascinating that this football field represents a denial for Barry Morphew.
So I'm standing in front of Suzanne's childhood home. This is the first area where she would have seen Barry working as a, um, a young man who would turn the sprinklers on at the golf course. And up the street there is also the uh, high school, elementary school that we just drove past. But the Fairway Estates, so this is where Suzanne grew up. With the high school here, elementary school, middle school. This is her home. Quite the contrast to where Barry out in the country grew up. There's no real hunting going on here other than golf. I just find it fascinating that these two personalities come together in a, this love story potentially gone, uh, gone wrong. You'll notice they still have the ribbons up. And there's one in front of her house as well on her tree. As teenagers on Friday and Saturday nights, Barry, who was the high school baseball star, and Suzanne, who was a few years younger than him, along with their friends, would cruise the streets of downtown Alexandria, Indiana. This is small town America, in the heartland. This city once relied on the automotive industry for its vibrance. When the jobs disappeared, the town's economy collapsed, and today, it's a former shell of what it once was. In this city parking lot, friends remember Barry driving his red Oldsmobile Cutlass with the windows down. He would use a single dumbbell to do arm curls so he could flex his muscles to be noticed by the girls, and he always had a girl with him, before he dated Suzanne. Well, here I am in front of Barry's house and Suzanne's home in Indiana. This is the house where they packed everything up and then from here they moved to Colorado. This is the house the girls grew up in where Barry uh, had this open land here to hunt, to do whatever he needed to do. He had his own barn. Uh, all of these trees He's planted every one of these trees, all of these pines, 
And this is really kind of an oasis for Suzanne. I mean, this is where she raised her girls and her family. This is where she would meet her family for, um, you know, get togethers. Just everybody would have fun. Uh, one of the things that's, that's interesting here is it looks like the uh, systems. Uh, he's got beware of dogs, warning, uh, trespassing. Uh, you'd be shot. Uh, you can see those films there, but there's so much of Suzanne in this home. These rocks speak so much of Barry's uh, landscaping capabilities. This is the home that he sold and cashed out on almost immediately after Suzanne disappeared. This home represents Suzanne and how quickly he got rid of it. And it's almost interesting, you know, it, it's very interesting as we think about the correlation between the home in Colorado and this home here in Indiana. She's still missing. And um, this is the place she didn't want to leave. I can imagine all of the great memories she made here in this particular home. It's sad. It really is. It's sad. This is the area that Suzanne knew best. She was born and raised here. She loved her Indiana hometown and all it represented. She raised her two girls here. Her friends tell us she did not want to leave and move to Colorado. This is where she beat cancer for the first time. This is where her heart was. So where I'm at right now is Barry's tree farm. Right along the lines of those pine trees there and along that forest line, and you see some of the stubbings of uh, trees sticking up. So what Barry would do is he would plant the trees and when they were uh, you know, mature enough, he would pull them up and then he would use them for his landscaping business and his customers. Okay. Barry is very, very um, experienced at planting trees extensively. And this was his old tree farm, which is, he has since sold it, uh, but this was his property. Well, one thing to understand about hunters is they have a favorite place of all time. Okay? As you can see this sign here, this area here is ripe for deer. But what's significant about this piece of property and all of these woods here, this is Barry Morphew's favorite place to hunt. This is his most significant area where he will go out into the forest and he'll hunt deer or animals. Okay. Now, interesting thing about hunters is when the hunting season comes along, they go out and they get their tag, but they also come out to the area where they're gonna hunt, okay? And they mark that territory, okay? And then they'll come back during deer season, okay? And you'll actually, they tell you that they're, they go through a, almost a physiological change. Their blood pressure increases, their pupils dilate. Uh, they get excited as they get closer to the hunt, okay? Well, that's exactly uh, potentially some of the things that Barry goes through when he comes to this piece of property and he gets out there by himself on the hunt. I ask myself, I wonder if Suzanne caught some of those feelings. I don't know. It's interesting though, for sure. So this is Barry's mom's house, and notice the woods right behind it. 
And those are the woods I was just in. So Barry can literally walk out and go into those woods and go hunting. So I'm here at uh, Roger Morphew's grave, Barry's dad. You know, being here in, in his town and Suzanne's town where they both grew up, where they fell in love, they went to school together. I think Roger played a significant role in uh, Barry's development as an adolescent as well as into his um, teenage years. You know, this uh, trip out here has really got me thinking about did Roger play a more significant role in Barry's ultimate um, decisions? I just wonder what type of influence and what kind of pressures this man put on his son. You know, as we think about um, this tragedy as a whole, you know, I'm left wondering, is this a situation that just kind of got out of control? Um, and is Barry uh, responsible for Suzanne? I don't know, okay? But I'll tell you this, I am left with a lot more questions again than answers, okay? But I'm curious of what you think. Go ahead uh, and tell me what you think. Put your comments down below. Um, and thank you so much for following the interview room. Please subscribe, please share this video, and we'll see you next week.